that Bentley decided to create this car as you see it was a punctuation point. So we're 100 years old. Uh, we wanted to celebrate that by looking at the past, but also predicting some of the future that we see. We spent a lot of time exploring Bentley as a brand, what were key icons for Bentley, and then imagining how they might develop and evolve into the future. The car is all about innovation, sustainability, um, amazing design, and also this ability to be driven and also drive that, that customer choice. All of those things we think are really important to our future customer, not only in terms of, uh, for example, tailpipe sustainability, so zero emissions from the vehicle, but also the way that the car is built. So here at the factory in Crewe, for example, we're a zero emissions uh, factory. We have uh, renewable energy and over 30,000 solar panels. So that's really part of the whole package that our customers are looking for, a fully integrated, sustainable uh, product. The face is a really good example of how we combined the digital and the analog. We created a large display, which is kind of surrounded by the grill and the headlights. And these elements are combined like you would do on an original blower Bentley, for example. So we reinvented the face of Bentley, but inside it is a screen. And this screen interacts with people, it interacts with other cars. And this is a way for us to bring the user experience, this kind of visual um, communication from the inside of the car predominantly to the outside of the car. We've gone for a body colour, but also we've got two bright wear colours. So we've got aluminium, which is in its raw state, just polished, and copper, which is in its raw state. So very kind of recyclable materials. So a kind of the future has to be sustainable and we needed to have that in the car. So copper and the way we fuse the copper from a geometry point of view into the aluminium and this kind of combines with the glass elements and then the body, it's seamless. We go from body to glass through these kind of brightware elements without too much awkward design solutions. So over the top of the door, you get this very lovely line that runs all the way through the door, shut line all the way through the roof and back down to the front of the door again, but it's all combined with these lovely details. Uh, moreover, we spend a lot of time looking at what happens when you look deeper into the design, into the vents, into the corners. We're creating kind of exciting areas of detail. And these are all combined by using the same diamond pattern. And this is being seen on the front of the car, in the grille, on the C-pillar, for example, in some of the venting and also leading into the interior. On the inside, we wanted it to be just as much a Bentley at first look but really push the vision of where our future can be. So the concept is pitched towards 2035 as kind of the year that this would be a reality. And that allowed us to really conceptualize some ideas, but underpinning everything had to be the fact that there was a real roadmap that could lead to this realistic future. It's not just a concept, but it's much more uh, about a statement of intent for where our future is within Bentley. And it has some key messages that run right through the whole interior. Um, that of a future design language, uh, the user experience being a fully autonomous car, um, and also a sustainability message that underpins every material and the approach of the car as a whole and the way that it will really interact with our environment in the future, supporting our principle of extraordinary grand tour and the grand touring and that kind of passionate side of the automotive world and mobility in the future. We had this idea of utilizing wood that had already been, I guess, cut down, those trees. And so we started looking at uh, a river wood. So something uh, that has already been existed. In fact, the river wood we're using in this car is carbon dated to 3300 BC. Um, it's came, come from Cambridge, so the Fenlands. As the farming industry increases in that part of the country, um, they're finding these huge logs which have been buried there for over 5,000 years and have taken on this blackness. So it's, it's oak, it's British oak, but it's taken on this black from the peat uh, in the soil, uh, which gives us a really beautiful aesthetic. But of course, this idea that you can take something which is effectively a waste product as it's being taken out of the ground, um, you know, at one point it was a waste product um, so that they could continue with their farming. And certainly we, we saw an opportunity in the beauty of this natural product which has a kind of aged look to it 
uh, and this beautiful aesthetic, we were able to take that wood, have it dried out over a long period of time, um, utilize the best pieces that we could find, and then we impregnated that with copper dust, which is recycled from the other copper elements within the car, um, and, and pushed all of that into the grain structure. What that did was stabilize the wood so that we could use it for milling um, and use this solid approach to the wood. Um, but it also gave a really beautiful look which matched the rest of the car and really brought out the natural grain structure. Uh, and that gave us something that effectively is a waste product, then recycled, repurposed, given a new life. Um, and all throughout the car, the center console, the sides of the seats and the wings are all used using this solid block oak, uh, which has ha had this incredible story and this great, this great tale, and actually has now become very precious. Uh, and I think is a good example of a kind of approach of how craftsmanship can be linked to materials which are inherent to this land, inherent to our history, um, but can take on a whole new life and be crafted into something very fresh, very new, uh, and actually looks quite contemporary within the, the car, but has this incredible story behind it. So there are materials that run right through the car, which were quite new to us. Um, there's a lot of fabric in the car. The main tub of the car is completely covered in a fabric. It's a sustainable cotton. Um, it's woven here in England, down in Sutton, with uh, a company called Gainsborough Silk Company. And we worked with them to create something very specific for us, something that was our own pattern, our own colors, um, and is quite unique to this car. We used a company called Hand and Lock um, that are over 200 years old and really are experts in their field at this embroidery, hand embroidery uh, and a, a technique called trapunto where they almost create a 3D relief to the surfaces. Um, and that, again, looks quite contemporary and modern, but is actually utilizing some beautiful craftsmanship and things that potentially will be lost if we don't sustain those. We thought that was really important to try and get the very best of British craftsmanship, but show how that can be combined with future craftsmanship. So the crystal areas in the car are an amazing example of this, where we've worked with Cumbria Crystal, a partner of ours and somebody we've collaborated with for years, really one of the, the last full crystal houses left in the country, who go all the way from sand to end product. Uh, we worked with them to develop these AI interfaces, so the areas of the car in the front and the back of the car where the customer sits, where the intelligence of the car would be. And future craftsmanship looks like how you take digital technology and how you weave that together with something that's still precious, something that's still really valuable. And in those interfaces, we created crystal pieces that are hand blown, a thousand year old industry, um, and hand cut to create refractions within the lighting. So we combined this kind of uh, crystal industry and, and crystal blowing industry with uh, a lighting artist, which we collaborated with. So if you imagine wood, leather, and metal as our first three materials, then we've woven light as our fourth material. Not this appendage, but something that's interwoven. And so in the doors, you see how the light works with the embroidery and the fabric and then into the wood and then into the glass. And I think this is really a kind of design cue for our future of how we take the very best of what we do today and show where that next step is for Bentley. It's really important for Bentley to show that we're a family, we're a large family. We build on site, we design on site, we engineer on site. There are a huge amount of people invested in the product. The craftsmanship that Bentley puts in on the products is, is, is second to none. The same craftsmen worked on this car. The same craftsmen are part of the story. We have in the door pocket of this car a scroll with every member of the Bentley family written down. And this is 9,000 people that are putting their names in a time capsule. To, to kind of punctuate this point as a celebration of the 100 years. The whole thing is phenomenal. The whole concept of the car is it's something you could really imagine being in 
full scale production being in manufacture. It's quite a large car, but the way it sits, the way it portrays itself, the features that it's got, the simplicity of it being a two seater, then it changing to a four seat version is technically mind blowing and what you could do with the vehicle. And then all of the technology that sits within it just makes you feel that it's really, really achievable as a production car of the future. This really is our vision embodied um, and where we, where we see this moving forward. And yeah, I'm extremely proud of the way that it came out. I'm extremely proud of the way that Bentley Design worked together, engaged with all areas of the company uh, to really make sure that this was a statement for the entire company. Uh, and for the future of Bentley.